Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne. Uh, this is a T-shirt. Be the change the world needs. Okay, so uh, you should be the change that the world needs. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, talk about uh, what Jesus said. Do not call your brother a fool uh, in Matthew uh, uh, um, 5, 5 verse 22 but uh, we're going to uh, start in verse 21 and go to 22 uh, so the, the problem with uh, the Christian world is that we're such judges Right, we we judge people. When we find out that uh, we're a Christian and we're a Christian talking to another Christian, um, we ask a question: What church do you go to? Someone might say we're a Catholic straight away. If you're Pentecostal or you're traditional uh, Protestant, you, you're feeling sorry for the person. You're feeling you know, the person uh, worships idols, uh, part of a dead church. Uh, they're not even born again. They're not even saved. They're hopeless. And um, if uh, you're stuck in your religion and your religious ways and the indoctrination of man, you'll try and tell the Catholic that they shouldn't be worshipping idols and praying to saints and they shouldn't be stuck in that. They should be born again. But if you don't say that, you're probably just thinking that. Uh, if you're a Baptist and you find out someone's a Christian, uh, you ask them what church they go to and they say a Pentecostal church, you think, oh, this person's speaking in tongues of demons, they're deceived, they talk about all this power, but their lives are reprobate, their lives are full of unrighteousness, they're big sinners. Uh, the braggers, the carried away, the delusional. Uh, if uh, you're Pentecostal and you find out someone's a Christian and you find out that uh, they come from a uniting church or Baptist church, you say, oh, they're dead. They're only half full of the Holy Spirit. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, they're, they're deceived. They're religious. Uh, they're legalistic. Um, they've got so much Bible in them they can't see the light. Uh, they're so much less than me. And um, you're not uh, actually calling them a fool to their face unless you actually do that. But you're saying they're a fool in your head. Uh, you know, did I cover everyone? The, the, uh, oh, yeah, uh, I didn't cover one group of people. But uh, if you're Pentecostal, you'll judge the Catholics and the Baptists. If you're Baptist, you'll judge the Catholics and the Pentecostals. And uh, if, um, if you're Catholic, you judge all the Protestants saying you're not part of the true church. And by this, by this, you shall know that you are my followers. If, if you have love one for another, <laughs> by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. So the world looks on at this and they say, hey, you Christians, you can't even agree on anything. Why, why should I be part of your hypocrisy? And that's who we are. We're busy calling each other fools. Uh, every stream, even in Pentecostal, even in uh, Pentecostal circles, we've all got streams and different beliefs and different uh, theologies and different uh, interpretations of scripture even in the stream we call each other fools uh, we think we're fools um, you know a lot of people on Facebook and YouTube on social media have a lot of courage uh, to call someone religious uh, to call someone a fool that's another thing the hyper grace people uh, well, you know the wrong grace teaching that people had deceived in the grace theology They'll call uh, someone who's a Baptist or someone who's legalistic who believes you've got to obey the law and you've got to work to work out your salvation and 
salvation is a lot more than just uh, talking about it and um, you actually got to do some work and have evidence in your life of uh, being saved rather than uh, you've got to be actually holy and uh, without sin and practicing righteousness to go to heaven. Someone who talks like that's legalistic. Sounds like I'm legalistic, doesn't it? Um, but you hyper grace people, you just call everyone religious and you're so free and you don't have to obey the law of the Old Testament. You don't have to obey the commands of Jesus in the New Testament. You're just uh, walking in lawlessness and you call us all fools and bound up and crazy. And uh, there's nothing like a hyper grace, grace filled loving, grace-filled, free person to dump on people. They're very good at dumping on people. Um, and uh, you call us all fools. So, but Jesus says that, uh, you know, um, he says in verse 21, you shall, you, you've heard that uh, it said um, to those of old, you shall not murder and whatever you uh, whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whoever says to his brother, you fool, shall be in danger of the hellfire. So um, legalistic people uh, look at uh, people in hyper grace and get angry at them and, and judge them and uh, get uh, pretty vicious with them. People in hyper grace look at people who are legalistic, who want to be holy and obey the law and stuff, and they get angry at them and call them fools. Um, and uh, Jesus said, watch out, you'll be in trouble. And there's nothing like a Facebook thread with uh, a massive drawn out argument. And depending on who's winning the argument uh, and who's doing a more comprehensive beat up job with their verses and, and, and their theologies and their arguments, whoever loses their patience first starts calling the other one names and um, trying to insult them and bring personal insult. This sort of behavior Jesus isn't into, uh, you know. Jesus was saying to me the other day that he just doesn't like fights. Doesn't like people fighting. Uh, there's no winners in a Facebook argument, even if you think you won, even if you think you demolish the other person's argument, there's no winner. Uh, and, uh, and that's just how it is. Jesus doesn't like arguments and, uh, we're often angry at someone without a cause when there's something in them that really ticks us off that's in us. So um, if someone's being uh, really uh, prideful, they're, if they're insisting that they're right, they're being really arrogant, they're being really obnoxious and rude with their behaviour and the way they're speaking, we get really upset with that. Uh, if we're prideful and arrogant ourselves, them insisting that they're right, them, them dismissing our argument, not listening to us, being very arrog arrog arrogant and, um, and, and self-aggrandizing, self-promotion of themselves and building themselves up arrogant and rude and, and, and not even considering your argument. Uh, we hate that because we're arrogant and we're prideful and we think we're right. And how dare they say that they're right? It's actually seeing something in them that really ticks us off. You know, if someone's being impatient with us and not listening to us and not listening to our argument and not responding to what we just said, but continuing to hammer us with what they want, not listening to each point we make, not commenting on each point we make, but continuing to hammer us. We get really upset with that. They're not listening to us. They're not answering my questions. They're not answering my points, you know. And we'll tell them, why don't you answer my points? Instead of making your argument, why don't you make an argument to the points that I'm bringing up? Why don't you answer my questions? We get really cranky and we start calling them names. That's because we don't listen to their points. 
That's because we're not listening to each point they make. That's because we're not answering each point that they make. It's in us. And when Jesus, I was making my coffee and I always seem to have a drink in a coffee or an apple cider when I'm doing these videos, it's part of my preparation. We get angry when Jesus, when I was making my coffee, Jesus said, I didn't understand angry with a, without a cause because uh, most times I think I get angry with a real cause. And uh, one thing, if you're watching my videos, one thing you, know, you realize that I get angry with and I get really heated with is uh, when people who are uh, teaching false things like Bill Johnson, Chris Valentine, Sean Bowles, Joseph Prince, uh, sometimes Andrew Wommer, um and, uh, you know, Kat Kerr, and I'll just name people. And, uh, and, and I get really, really cranky with false teaching. I get really, really angry with false teachers. And, um, it really, really annoys me that people are being deceived. Um, that's angry with a cause. That's angry. That's righteous anger with a cause. But unrighteous anger is when people are ticking us off because they're being like us. When, when people are ticking us off because they're being like us. They, they can't help it. That's their behaviour. And, and the only reason their behavior is really annoying us is because it's us. It's what we don't like in ourselves. They're, they're being a mirror of us. Um, you, you get two people with the Jezebel spirit, with a controlling spirit, and you get them in each other's face, and there's just an argument that goes on for 150 posts on the thread. It's just two people arguing and insisting on their own way. And um, the only way to win an argument with a Jezebel is to shut up. Right? The only smart way how to annoy someone with a controlling spirit is not to engage. Just to say, um, you know, I can see that this uh, debate is going nowhere and um, you're convinced of your uh, argument uh, and nothing's going to talk your way and uh, I'm not going to spend any more time trying to convince you of something you're not prepared to look at so um, I'm not going to continue here this is my last post and I'll post five more posts trying to provoke you into getting back into the argument um, <laughs> it's a sneaky way but the sneaky way to get control of someone who's trying to control you is to disengage. <coughs> that totally annoys them. And there'll be one or two or three more posts trying to provoke you back into it. Now, if the argument is happening over, uh, you know, Messenger, um, you can say the same thing. I'm not commenting anymore. And they'll post 15 or 20 posts trying to provoke you back into argument. They'll call you all sorts of names, trying to engage you. Because when you have the Jezebel spirit, and I've had the Jezebel spirit for most of my life, you have real enjoyment having a fist fight. You really enjoy fighting back and forth. You really enjoy it. You love it. It's sort of your adrenaline starts pumping up. You get really excited. When you start losing the argument, you start throwing uh, personal insults and all sorts of insults. The Christian church think that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And I've got this misteaching that you can use the word of God to cut people and slice people and show people that uh, they're hypocrites, that uh, they're totally wrong, they're totally deceived. And in, in your slicing, you're slicing another brother. You're slicing another Christian. You're taking a sword and running big cuts through another Christian. People use scripture after scripture to, to beat down their enemy, to to slice them, to hurt them. And, uh, you know, many hundreds of times people have used scriptures to insult me, to call me a false prophet, to call me a false teacher, to call me a jerk, to call me totally deceived, to show that I'm a total idiot, to, to show me that I've got no idea. And uh, most of the scriptures that are used against me are out of context 
and uh, a misunderstanding of what that scripture is. And um, I find that people uh, who, who are the most bound up actually use the most scriptures. Uh, I'm not a person that uses a lot of scriptures. So, um, and, and, you know, some people I know say I know have got, got a tremendous intellect and tremendous understanding of scriptures, but there's no way I can fight these religious people. For every scripture I can think of, they can think of 10. And do you know who is very good at using scripture in context? Satan. That's all Satan. He, he said, if you're the son of God, do this. If you're the son of God, do this. In, if you're the son of God, do this. You know, I'll give you all the kingdom of the world if you just bow down to me. You know, which hill, you know, Satan took someone to a high hill. Uh, he, he took Jesus to a high hill overlooking all the kingdoms of the world. Tell me where that hill was. Where, where Mount Kosciuszko, uh, what, you know, this Australia, uh, you know, uh, Kosciuszko is over in Nepal. Um, uh, did, did they take him to Kosciuszko? Because if he, he was on Kosciuszko, you could just see Nepal and India. You couldn't see Israel. You wouldn't see South Africa. You wouldn't see Australia from there, right? So where did Satan take Jesus? Where was that high hill? Have you ever considered that? That high hill was in the second heaven or, or Zion, the, 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 the holy hill of the Lord. That was looking down on the whole of earth. It was so far from earth, you could see the whole of earth. You know, and that's where people come from. They come from this holy high hill, looking down on everything, thinking they've got an answer to everything. That's the same of a Pharisee or a Jew uh, knew every scripture in the Bible. And, and so they could beat you up with hundreds and hundreds of scriptures. And so Satan selected three scriptures that uh, were backing up his argument that uh, he should bow. Right? If, if any scripture can be used to deceive and can be misapplied and misunderstood and, and the church is just bound up and in error and in trouble because they've got misinterpretations, misunderstandings of scripture. And, and, the, and the church is split into 40,000 denominations over different interpretations of scriptures. Now, some denominations have a lot of scripture interpretations right. Some denominations have less, but they're all arguing over different, different understandings of scripture. This is one thing we should all agree on. The Catholics agree on this. The Baptists agree on this. The Pentecostals agree on this. Jesus died for our sins. Another thing we should agree on, hypergrace don't agree on this, but we should take up our cross daily. That The Christian life should be a hard life. It should be a difficult life. It should be a life with persecution. It should be a life with suffering and trial. And if it's not suffering, trial and persecution, you're not living it right. If, if your life has no warfare, you're not doing anything. If Satan isn't coming against you in every conceivable way, you're not making any progress. The, the sword of the spirit shouldn't be used to cut up other Christians, right? And, and people, Christians think it should be. Now, the sword of the spirit should come to break down false teaching, to take ground to bring error and release and freedom to the captives. And you don't bring freedom to a captive by running knives through him and insulting him. You bring freedom to a captive, uh, making your, um, you know, your, your argument against hypergrace with a 45 minute video where there's no exchange back and forth, where you're just teaching it, like my last video. You make, your argument and use scripture to cut off mistruth by writing a book on how hyper grace and the grace theology is leading people astray. And you, you write a hundred pages 
scripture after scripture with no back and forth argument with the person laying out the case. And if a hyper grace or a grace theology person reads that book, it may actually convince them. But you be, be prepared for long reviews on, on Amazon tearing you to strips with their scriptures. And if you bother to read that, that may really hurt you. But this idea, when you meet a Catholic, that you say you, they're a fool in your own heart, that, that'll get you in trouble. The, the idea of being on a Facebook thread and calling someone a fool, that'll get you in trouble. The idea of uh, getting angry with a person just because they're manifesting the same problems that you have in your life, that'll get you in trouble. And Jesus says it'll get you in trouble. Jesus doesn't waste words. I, I think some people think that Jesus just comes sprouting a whole lot of bullshit. I think, I think the average Christian thinks Jesus was just running off at the mouth, that uh, he was just saying a whole lot of things that, um, you know, don't have to be taken uh, with any weight. You don't have to place any weight in, in, in what he said. I think people think Jesus was a fool. I think they worship him and raise their arms to him and sing his mighty praises, but they don't do anything he teaches. You know, Jesus said, why do you honour me with your lips? Why do you worship me and you don't do anything I say? You know, that should be a huge rebuke for the church. People just think that it was Jesus speaking off his mouth and um, speaking with many words and, and foolishness. You know, how dare you say to me, Jesus, that I honour you with my lips, but my heart is far from you. I love you. I worship you. I give my money to you. I go to church for you. I witness for you. I do this for you. I do this for you. I do this for you. I do this. How dare you say my heart isn't for you? Well, it isn't. Because you're not obeying him. You're doing religious things. Going to church, giving your money praying, reading your Bible, witnessing. It's all religious. It's all religious. You're serving yourself. How's that? You know, how is giving money? Because it makes you feel good. How is going to church? Because it makes you feel good. And if you don't get, go to church, everyone at church will call you a backslider and, and say you've depart from the gathering of the brethren. You go to church out of guilt. You go to church out of religion. You go to church out of doing good. Yeah, you need to take a good year or two off church. You find your life become a lot more peaceful. You need to be able to live with yourself and not go to church. I've got a very good friend, Mary. She's a tremendous friend. She got a tremendous faith. She's really beautiful. She gives me all the money she can afford. She is just an absolute beautiful demonstration of a Christian. Every time she catches an Uber, every time she goes to the shops, every time she goes out, she makes someone's day a better day. She, she's available to me any time I like. I can ring her and she can talk for hours and hours encouraging me and blessing me. She's one of the most beautiful people I know in the world. And guess what? She doesn't go to church. She doesn't do your church. But Jesus said, when two brothers meet and are together, I'm there in the midst. Two or three gather together. What does that mean? It means when two or three Christians are together, that is church. And I do that a couple of times a week, meet with other Christians. And I meet with them on Facebook and Zoom and over the phone. I'm always meeting with my church. But you'll judge me. You'll call me a fool. You'll call me backslidden. You, you, you'll uh, be angry at me for, for saying that you could possibly have, have a tremendous and a better relationship not going to a religious church. You, you, you look at me and say, how dare you say that I, I don't love Jesus from my heart? I tell you, you don't. You know, five times. John 14, 10, John 14, 21, John 14, 23, John 15, 10, John 15, 14 say, if you love Jesus, obey his commands. And most of you don't know his commands. You don't know he's got 50 commands. 
1 John 2, 3 says, if you say that you love him and don't obey his commands, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. If you haven't got the 50 commands of Jesus on your fridge yet, you need to print it out and put it in your fridge and start obeying him because you don't love Jesus until you're doing that. And so stop honouring, stop praising your name, stop praising Jesus when you don't even obey him. You call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say. That's another thing Jesus says. The closer you get to Jesus, the more intimate you get with Jesus, the more every one of his words makes sense. So he says, do not get angry with someone without cause. And that's how you get angry with someone without cause, because they're being prideful, they're being arrogant, they're being, think they're, they're a know-it-all, they're speaking with authority, they're dressing you down, and, 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 and you're saying, how dare you dress me down? How dare you say I don't have got a heart for Jesus? How dare you say I'm honouring you with my lips, but my heart's far from him? How dare you say I'm disobeying him? Who do you think you are? That's who I think I am, a prophet a teacher, an apostolic authority in your life. And I'm chastising you and I'm hitting you from all other angles. I'm saying, listen to Jesus. When you're getting angry at people, when you're calling people fools, you are in trouble. Do you think he's just playing around with that? Do you think he's just mucking around? Do you think he's just jesting? Do you think he's just joking? Do you think you're not in trouble? Do you think you can call people fools? Do you think you can get angry at people for acting like you? Do you think you can do that and not be in trouble and not in be in danger of the hellfire? Do you think Jesus is just joking? Do you think he just said that for a joke to his disciples? You know, in between the last supper, and, uh, and, and, and when he died, he said, if you don't obey me, you don't love me. You know, so if you don't listen to Jesus, you don't love him. So, so when he's saying, hey, don't get angry with a person without cause, don't call a person a fool, you're in danger of the hellfire. He means it, man. If, if you're doing that and going off at people and getting angry and having a bad attitude, you're in trouble. If you're calling a person a fool or an idiot or foolish, you're in trouble. You're very close. And, you know, once saved, always saved, hyper grace, all this false bullshit that's taught, uh, says that you can't lose your salvation. Jesus said you're in danger of the hellfire. What do you think that sounds like? Well, I don't explain it away. They can explain it away. They, they can do whatever they like. But I can tell you what. You, you're going to stop being angry at people and you stop calling people a fool. You need to stop it. Even if you think or perceive they are foolish, even if they are foolish, you need to shut up about that. And, and rather than calling them a fool, bring in a, a, a video, bring in a book, bring in something, hand it to them, dedicate it to them, write their name on the front, saying, I bought this for you. Let that do your argument for you. Let that do a hundred page turnaround on their foolishness. Spend some money on them. Invest in them. Jesus said, pray for enemies. Um, you know, bless those who spitefully use you. Je Jesus is totally countercultural. Jesus is Jesus is the most politically incorrect person you'll ever know. You want to transform a fool? Give them an argument, not on Facebook, not face-to-face. -face. Give them a very well-written book with a really sensitive and grace-filled, loving argument to their deception and invest in something that does a better job. Go looking for that answer for that fool. Go looking for that answer for that fool. You know, it says in Proverbs, trying to counsel a fool makes you a fool. Do you know that? Trying to talk sense into someone you perceive as a fool makes you foolish. Do you know that? Do you know, do you know wisdom is not to have an argument with a fool. If you think they're a fool, don't call them a fool and don't have an argument with them and don't try and convince them. Go and buy a book with 100 pages, dedicate it to them, to, to my precious friend, 
with their name and give it to them. So I bought this for you for Christmas. And it's coming up to Christmas. It's getting time. It's one season in the year where you can actually do that. I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to pick five fools, five people who are deceived, and find a book that'll turn them around. Find a book that'll teach them something. Find a book that'll bless them. Spend some of your hard-earned money and turn around the fool today. I encourage you. I I know I know uh, I've got a bit of toughness today. Uh, some of my videos today are pretty tough. I hope that um, they're not too tough for you. Um, and and uh, if this has convicted you, I pray that it has convicted you. I pray that. There's certain people that you're angry that you can release that anger and take that anger to God. There's certain people that rub you up the wrong way. I pray that uh, you, can, you, you can take those people to God and uh, make peace with God and ask God for help. Uh, ask Jesus for help on how to deal with that person that ticks you the wrong way. And if people tick you the wrong way, I hope that you enter into some personal counselling and change that arrogance, change that pride, change that impatience, change whatever's in you that you hate in them. Change yourself. If you, if you want to make a change to the world, take a look at yourself and change yourself. Michael Jackson said, if you want to make a difference to the world, take a look at yourself and change yourself. Right? Be the change the world needs, my T-shirt says. You be the change. If people are ticking you off, change yourself. And I don't apologise for being angry at false teachers. That's righteous anger. That's the line of Judah coming out of me. And uh, I'll always be angry at false teachers. Just as Jesus was angry with the Pharisees. Because they're leading people into error. There's so many people going to hell because of false teaching right now. So I hope that that was encouraging. If, if you like this uh, short video, uh, press like, press thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, consider subscribing. I suggest you look at the playlist on, on my homepage. Uh, certainly look at the playlist, a deeper look into the Gospels. This is one of them. I've preached on a lot of them. I was going through whole chapters with hour long videos and three hour long videos. I'm changing my style now. I'm just preaching on relevant stuff. Um, and uh, the next, um, uh, the next uh, chapter is going to be presenting stuff at the altar um, and, uh, and making sure you forgive people before you uh, bring a gift or an offering to the altar or be, before you bring your worship uh, and, and offer up your worship to the Lord, um, make sure you forgive everyone before you've done it or you're a hypocrite. Um, so um, that'll be my next uh, video. Um, but uh, after I've uploaded this, um, uh, after I've set this to upload, um, I'll be uh, going out for a bought lunch and enjoying some lunch. Uh, for myself. Uh, God bless.